I have a foundation called God Heals PTSD. And basically what we do is it provides both materials, curriculum, as well as provides seminars like I'm going to do with you in places like military bases, like with First Nations, um, going overseas. I've been in Ukraine, South Africa, I've been in Brazil, bringing this seminar as well. And the foundation just enables me to be able to raise the kind of funds that are necessary to go to these places that are not able to do a love offering or can't the, the, the income or the resources aren't there for me to be able to go. So it helps provide not only the resources for to deal with my expenses, but also we give away a lot of our material to mm -hmm. people. I mean, when I was in the, um, in the Navajo Nation, for instance, we gave away a whole case of the DVDs, CDs, the curriculum material for the uh, native pastors to use in teaching our people how to bring healing to the trauma. So yeah. that's, that's what it does. We, we're just there to provide educational resources to bring an, another understanding of how healing prayer can be a treatment to bring healing to any kind of trauma. But as you said, the idea that uh, the enemy would try to rob our identity, it, it speaks to the power of the body of Christ and uh, having somebody get access to life-giving relationships in the church, people that they can trust. And you know, it always points back to the character of the leaders as well, that, that they are trustworthy people that won't take advantage of a vulnerable population. Well, that's why I appreciate you, Peter. You know, there's a lot, the church never talks about trauma. We really don't. It's something that most churches don't want to touch. They leave it to the psychologist, to the psychiatrist, to the counselor's office. But the reality is we as the church have the greatest tool to bring healing to trauma. And that's the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's healing prayer. You know, when, when it says in Isaiah 61 about Jesus, he says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to declare good news to the poor, to the afflicted, to the traumatized. And then he says this, I've come to heal the brokenhearted and to bind up their wounds. Brokenheartedness literally means to have a shattered soul. And in the church, we, we talk about, we tell people, well, just pray more, read your Bible more, come to church more. But churches like yours really believes in the power of healing prayer that God wants to heal our shattered soul and restore our emotions and restore the dream of God for our lives. So that's why, quite frankly, it takes a little bit of courage for a church to host me, because as I said, most churches don't want to talk about this, but I'm really thankful that I get to come to you. Well, I'm married to Trish, you know, so she was doing deliverance from the first day I met her. And, uh, you know, what surprised me after, you know, I didn't have the training, the, the, formal training in psychology, but we were seeing people get healed of things emotionally that changed their physical makeup. Women that had been abused as young girls that kind of shut down and stopped developing in their natural state. When they got healed, their bodies changed, even though they were adults. Yeah. I mean, you, I wouldn't have believed that that could even happen, that the, that the willpower or, or the vow that someone would take when they get traumatized could stop their physical growth from happening. Uh, but I saw it firsthand. And then I also realized that there's extensions of trauma, like anorexia, yes. that wouldn't appear to have a base in trauma. Can you mention that real quick? I know well, those, are, those are what are called trauma responses, mm -hmm. in that there's something that has happened in the shattering of that soul who's experienced trauma at some point in their lives, that the way that they respond both emotionally, but also physically, is to either have anorexia, bulimia, having eating disorder, uh, self-cutting, where, where they cut themselves. There's a, there's a huge epidemic among the young people of what I call self-hatred. And that is they, they actually hate themselves. They can't look at themselves in the mirror. And it's because they, once again, believe the lie that because they have been traumatized, that there's something bad about them. I mean, the root, the root emotion is shame. Shame says there's something bad about me, and that's why all of this has happened to me. So things like eating disorders is actually at what's called a trauma response. This is how they emotionally respond by continuing to either punish themselves or try to change the way they look in such a way that it's, it's not 
I mean, I've, I will say this. I've literally met women who uh, developed an eating disorder because they knew that at one point their sexual abusers were attracted to them by their looks, by the way that they looked, how cute they were. And so they began to develop both anorexia and bulimia both mm -hmm. so that they became like skeletons. Mm -hmm. So, or another eating disorder, they would balloon up into 300 pounds so that they could, they men would no longer be attracted to them to kind of be as a shield. So all of that's trauma responses that come from people who carry unresolved trauma from abuse and violation. But also I, we found um, that people that were out of control, like in Joyce Meyer's case, she said there wasn't a day in her high school year that she wasn't afraid of her father. That yeah. whatever stress hormone is getting secreted over and over again um, can also cause people to be very controlling and, and an eating disorder as well. I may not be able to control you attacking me, but I can't control what goes in my mouth. And I need order. I need some form of order in my life because I'm, I feel so out of control when, I, when I'm being abused, right? And that can all be healed. So maybe we could just spend a minute on what people could expect when they come. It's a Saturday and then you'll be preaching on Sunday, but it's March 13th, 2021 at King of Kings. You'll be doing a live seminar there and we'll also be streaming for a registration fee. But what are some of the highlights that they can think about uh, taking away? So first of all, I always like to start out with a little worship because I want the presence of God in the seminar because we're this is about what God's what God's provision is to bring healing to all trauma. And then I'm going to start out with a biblical perspective of what trauma is and look at some Old Testament figures who carry trauma as well as some New Testament figures. We're going to talk about uh, Isaiah 61, look at the Psalms and look at the condition of brokenheartedness. Then the, in, in later on, we're gonna look at a clinical view of trauma, how unresolved trauma in the brain actually affects the body and causes all sorts of dysfunctions within the body. Where in the midst of that, you're going to get testimonies, video testimonies of people who have been healed of trauma and actually experienced not just emotional and mental healing, but actually experienced physical healing once their trauma was completely resolved. Then after that, after the testimonies and understanding that, then I'm gonna walk everybody through that healing prayer model. So I train them in how to pray it. Then I'm gonna pray over everybody in the room. I'm gonna do a corporate prayer for, for healing uh, of their trauma. And then at the end, we do what you're familiar with, Peter. We do an impartation. That is, I want whatever anointing God has given me in my life to bring healing to trauma. I want that passed on to everybody that's in the seminar. So it's going to be a time when the Holy Spirit's going to come and bring a fresh impartation of whatever gifts, grace, and anointing there is to bring healing to trauma. But I want people to understand that I always approach trauma with joy because the Word of God says that Jesus, knowing what was before him, went to the cross with joy because he knew that on the other side of the cross, there was healing and restoration and that the dream that God has always had for man would be on the way to being restored. So we're, it, it's a seminar where it's not always going to be super serious. We're going to laugh a little bit and, mm -hmm. and have a good time. But ultimately, people are going to come out of the seminar, not only restored themselves, but also they're going to learn how to do it for others.